It's Tuesday, April 12th. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And on Friday, 8 April, we had this turbo DC3 accident in a remote, remote corner of Colombia, South America. Let's check it out. On the Aviation Safety Network, this accident occurred Friday, April 8th. This was a aero modifications DC-3 flown by Alianza Airlines out of Colombia, South America. These aircraft have been modified. This is a common modification on older DC-3s to remove the old radial engines and replace them with Pratt & Whitney PT-6 turboprop engines. No fatalities, no injuries on this particular accident. An AMI DC-3 turboprop nosed down and swung off the runway during landing at San Felipe Airport in Colombia. There were no injuries, but the aircraft sustained substantial damage. Photos from the accident show damage to the underside of the fuselage, forward fuselage of propeller blades. The right-hand main gear had collapsed and the left-hand main gear tire had punctured. So what caused this accident? Let's take a look at the video. This accident occurred deep in the Amazon, right here in the corner of Colombia and Venezuela and Brazil. Uh, the airstrip's called San Felipe. It's a dirt airstrip right on the Rio Negro River. Here's the video capture that's been featured on Twitter of the landing accident. Let's take a look at that again. The tail is pulled down at a fairly high rate of speed. The directional control is immediately lost to the DC-3. It veers to the left of the runway. It promptly ground loops, breaking off the right main gear. At this speed, the rudder is what's providing directional control of the aircraft. As soon as you force that elevator down, pull that elevator down hard like that, that rudder becomes blanked out by the wings. Also, by pulling that elevator down so quickly at that high rate of a speed, you're putting a pronounced angle of attack on the wings. Those wings are beginning to lift even more reducing the effectiveness of the wheel brakes. So you don't have wheel brake differential control of the aircraft, nor do you have rudder control of the aircraft. The tail wheel is not steerable. It's normally locked for takeoff and landing on these DC-3s. So by pulling that tail down so early, he has effectively lost directional control of the aircraft. Once it goes off the side of the runway, it's gone to the rodeo and you've broken the right main gear off and then punctured the left tire. Also too, while watching this video, initially you can hear the power up on the engines, but also it looks like the flaps are up. So is this a landing accident or is this a rejected takeoff? Normally you take off with the flaps up in the DC-3. And if you perform a rejected takeoff in the DC-3 and pull that elevator down too soon, you're going to lose directional control right away of the aircraft. Again, even on a rejected aircraft, and a DC-3 is an absolute handful during a rejected takeoff, you still need to keep that tail up and the weight on the main wheels in order to maintain directional control of the aircraft in the event of a rejected takeoff. And as we look at the aircraft after the accident, you can see the flaps are up. Now again, hard to tell, did those flaps just creep up uh, after a loss of hydraulic pressure after the accident, or was this a takeoff accident and or a rejected takeoff loss of control accident? 
Here's an example of a DC-3 landing on a grass strip here in the States called Mallards, posted by Jim Brown on YouTube. Note the difference here. Now, don't <laughs> I don't recommend coming in this close to the trees on, on one of these approaches, but he wants to nail it onto the end of the runway, roll it on wheel landing, keep the tail up. Your directional control is being offered by the aerodynamics of the rudder. Keep the tail up. See the forward elevator input by the pilot? Until which time that you fly the elevator down. You're basically flying two sets of wings on the DC-3 once you land it. You fly the wings onto the ground, and then you fly the tail onto the ground. Here's another example from Zinger Aviation Media, uh, Princeton Airport, Montgomery, New Jersey. Same thing on takeoff, you want to fly the tail of the DC-3 up relatively quickly to gain directional control aerodynamically via the rudder. The tail is already up just as the power comes up on the engines. Full directional control of the aircraft on takeoff. Same thing coming into land. You're going to wheel land the DC-3 and keep the tail up until which time the horizontal stabilizer is no longer flying. You can even add a little bit of power. We do this on the Husky from time to time to keep the tail up. Roll it on. This is a one wheel landing. Excellent crosswind technique. If you had a left crosswind, this would be how you do it. Right main down, tail way up. Now watch the forward stick come in. Pushing the tail up. Hear that? Just a little stab of power. Now you're down to taxi speed. You can fly that tail down and taxi the aircraft with complete directional control. Here's a view of the DC-3 after the accident showing the flaps retracted and the propellers bent equally on both sides indicating that an equal amount of power was applied to both engines at the time that they struck the ground. Here's another view where you can clearly see the PT-6 turbine engine conversion the condition of the propellers and the right main gear failed. Flaps retracted. And it's the cargo carrying capacity with these big cargo doors on the DC-3 that make it such a great performer for these sort of remote airstrips. So what do you think? Was it pilot error here or did the tire blow causing this aircraft to depart the runway to the left? Thanks so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.